I was just a tougher dude and had a short fuse. I wouldn't really consider myself an angry person, like walking around angry all the time. People had to be respectful. And if they didn't, you know, I'd take them by the throat. Darren Ham never understood why people angered him so easily. Raised in a loving home, he was constantly getting into fights as a boy. Then taking over his family's struggling sanitation business at 19 and dealing with greedy, deceitful customers only made it worse. That's when I kind of really learned uh, the dark side of people. The way they will attack you and belittle you and demean you. I felt I was right and everybody else was wrong. His volatile nature would spill into other areas of his life. In 2002, at 26 years old, Darren married Jen and started a family. As long as no one crossed him, he was fine. He never got physical with me. He mostly just was so volatile, like he would just lose it, lose his temper. Everybody knew you could say the wrong thing to Darren and it's, it's gonna be a problem. As their family grew, Jen, who was raised Catholic, wanted to reconnect with God. She started going to church, hoping it would help their marriage. Yet Darren wanted nothing to do with Jesus, the church, or the people in it. If she got home, I'd be disgusted, and I would tell her that she's chasing the invisible man. Darren, through business, felt like the Christians were the ones being the worst to him. He did not like hypocrisy, and it really turned him off of the church. Over the years, Jen grew tired of walking on eggshells around her husband. I was very unhappy in our marriage. I definitely considered getting a divorce. So in 2009, she convinced Darren to go to marriage counseling. I was oblivious. I was so self-absorbed that I didn't recognize any issues in our marriage. I didn't see the problem, and I, I did not want to change. Turned into big fights about it. After two years of counseling, Darren stopped going. A short time later, the therapist took Jen aside. He was like, look, I'm a Christian counselor and you should leave your husband, he's a caveman. And it was just really like a gut punch to me at the time, because I was like, no, I need help. Jen decided to stay for their two boys, Dylan, a young teenager, and Griffin, a toddler. After the counseling, I was pretty much accepted, like I'm just gonna live this life of misery and that's just how it's gonna be. Then in January 2011, Griffin, then two years old, developed sudden breathing problems. Within days, he was hospitalized and in cardiac distress. There was little doctors could do. Sitting by Griffin's hospital bed, Darren began to hope maybe Jesus existed after all. I was in such desperation that if there was a possibility of that being true, I would exhaust all possibilities. Four days later, doctors declared Griffin brain dead. I felt weak. I felt for the first time in my life that I wasn't, I wasn't tough enough. Jen spent most of that day holding Griffin and saying goodbye to him. When evening came, Darren mustered the strength to hold his little boy. And I squeezed his hand, and I instantly was taken to heaven. I could see Griffin. He was just so happy. I was in awe. I couldn't believe what was happening that I, I thought it was over um, and, and hopeless. And here he was, fully alive and vibrant, the happiest he had ever been. Darren says Griffin started talking to someone. Darren couldn't see who it was, but somehow knew it was Jesus. Feeling God's love for the first time, Darren finally saw the truth about himself and God. I knew my sin condition. I, I knew painlessness of heaven. I knew the love of God, and I was shocked at the depth of love that he had for me especially considering the type of brute uh, that I was. I immediately was a believer. It was then Darren accepted that his son was in God's hands. I was very aware uh, that as much as I loved Griffin, it was uncomparable to how much God loves him and that Griffin is safe. And then I immediately was back in that hospital. Sadly, Griffin died the next day. Through grief and tears, Jen noticed for once Darren didn't lash out in anger. He was at peace. Then he told her and everyone else what he'd witnessed. Darren immediately was telling everybody 
It's all about love and relationships. It's all about love and relationships. Griffin's gonna be in a good place. His anger completely gone, Darren began seeking God, reading his Bible, and going to church with his family. I could understand God's love. So as I would read the Bible, it's, it would unfold to me. And my marriage was immediately healed. And I saw everything that I had put her through. And I knew her love. And I knew that I was selfish. Darren's a new man. I always say that it's like a Saul to Paul type experience with Darren. Almost two years after Griffin's death, Darren and Jen had a daughter, Elena. Darren says the reality of Christ's love has transformed his life completely. Makes me cry. The thought of his love, it just brings tears to my eyes. It's, it's deeper than what can be known. What an amazing work God did in Darren's heart. I mean, here's a man who struggled, he called himself a brute, who struggled with kind of a heart of stone for so long. It made me think of Ezekiel talking to people in Ezekiel 36. He said, God is giving you a new heart. He's taking away the heart of stone and giving you a heart of flesh. One of the amazing things to me about this story is Darren, a man who was very angry, who just had kind of a wall up about him, didn't he? You would presume that at the moment of losing his son, he would be his most furious and angry with the Lord. Yet in that time, his heart surrendered and he felt God's love. It's an amazing transformation, right? As opposed to anger at God, which I, certainly there was disappointment, of course. But here's a man who says, God, I can see and feel your love in the midst of this and that you care for my son and that you care for me. You know, in 1 Corinthians, Paul says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard the plans God has for those who love him. And it takes us taking a step and saying, Lord, I want to give you this, you know, heart of stone I have. We see stories on this show every day about people delivered from drugs or alcohol or, you know, they've wandered far from God and then they feel his love and embrace him and walk in his ways again. But here's a story about a man who had a heart of stone. And scripture causes us to examine ourselves and say, what's the condition of my heart? Proverbs 4.23 says, above everything else, guard your heart. It is the wellspring of life. So I think a unique thing about Darren's story is it can cause us to say, Lord, what's the condition of my heart? And maybe more than anything, you already know. And if you have anger toward God or anger toward other people, I think this is a great day to bring that before God and say, Lord, I don't like the condition my heart's in. I don't like that I kind of respond to people in anger or I have hostility toward you because of disappointments. <clears throat> Maybe this is a day to bring that before God and say, Lord, I want you to change my heart. If you find yourself in a season right now where you find yourself naturally kind of angry at things around you, let's bring it before God and let him do a work in us. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, I come before you today and I give you who I am. And I recognize in me that my heart isn't right. It's not right before you. It's not right before others. I have this inclination to respond in anger or, or hostile sometimes. I just ask you to bring peace into my life and heart. This may not be easy for me, but I understand you want to do a work in me. You love me. And you say in John 14, 27, peace I give to you. And it's not like the world gives. Do not be troubled or afraid. So Lord, today, I literally give you my heart and the condition of it. And I ask you to do a work in me. And I ask you to lead me in the ways of Jesus so I can respond to others in his way. And Lord, I thank you for loving me in spite of who I am and my sin problem. I know you love me. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, here at CBM, we are always available to pray with you for whatever your need is. If you need further prayer, give us a call at 800-700-7000. We'd love to pray with you. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.